Hey, Mike from Real Voice LA here. I wanted to go over something today that uh, we get asked quite a bit, mostly by people just starting out in voiceover, but also from people who've been at it just a little while and are looking to get a leg up on their home recordings. And that is, which recording software should I be using? Which digital audio workstation is right for me? And I always say, whatever you're fast in and whatever you're comfortable in. Um, the recording software has the least amount of effect on your sound of anything you're using to record with including the room you're standing in. Uh, you'd be better off researching and spending money on acoustic treatment for your room than you would be worrying about the actual software you're going to use. Uh, there are a couple caveats to that, I believe, uh, and they're all goal-related. I think uh, if you have the goals or ambition to work in a post-production facility or a voiceover studio or a music recording studio, uh, the standard still Pro Tools, at least in the United States and throughout most of Europe. Uh, and the other one is I've noticed that the NPR journalist and profession, uh, podcast production company world leans heavily on Adobe Audition, some Pro Tools, some Adobe Audition, uh, but those two kind of seem to be in that professional world. Um, obviously, composers use other things like Logic and uh, Cubase and uh, Ableton, and there's a lot of others as well. So think about that. Uh, but for the most part, whatever you're fast in, if you're comfortable, if you bought a PreSonus product and it shipped with Studio One, use it. If you have GarageBand on your Mac and you like that, awesome. If you run Linux because you're that weirdo and you want something for free, Audacity works. Uh, we're recording simple one track things it, it, for the most part. It's just auditions or simple corporate things. We're not doing much mixing or anything like that. Uh, I. I, I don't really see how worrying about it, it really does uh, much, much harm, uh, much good. Sorry. Uh, I do hear people say some stuff that may, doesn't really hold any water to me. And that is, I hear people say you should stay away from things like Logic and Pro Tools and Cubase and some of the other like large full scale DAWs. Their reasoning being you're never going to need all that. You don't want to do all that. It's too complicated. Uh, the reality is you're never going to use 99 plus percent of the functionality in Audacity either. You're just not, you're, you're just not going to do it. The difference between the two are Pro Tools, Logic, uh, Adobe Audition, these bigger full-scale DAWs, they're scalable. They can be as simple and as small and as, as very, very easy as you want them to be, or they can be as complex as scoring and mixing a feature film. Uh, Audacity, it's hard to do that with. Uh, GarageBand, it's hard to do that with. So th think about that. If, this, if you do want to down the road learn about mixing and dive a little more into production or dive a little more into these types of worlds, um, it's going to be hard to then switch while you're in the middle of hustle and hustle and you got auditions coming in, you're doing some corporate jobs and all this kind of stuff to also now learn a new DAW and switch over. Uh, so if you're just starting out, maybe take a pause and think about that. Um, if you never have the ambition to do that kind of stuff and all you're going to do is auditions, whatever's easy. Again, it's all about speed. My, even my saying, hold on and see if you should learn the bigger DAWs have to do with speed down the road. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.